everyone, and welcome back to Cast Creations. Well, hopefully you're seeing this in a lot more better detail than before. Uh, Mr. Cows has got a brand new camera, and it has a thing called focus lock, which means I can keep it at a certain range, and it'll keep it in focus, not the background. So here we have uh, an ogre that I have been I uh, 3D printed, and I've been finding the arts of uh, hiding layer lines. Now, he's not perfect. He has a few problems, but I'm getting there. And this is like a uh, witch hunter ogre for my friend, and I'm sure he will have a lot of fun with him once I finish him up. Now, before I do anything else, uh, a friend of mine, well, not a friend of mine, somebody on here asked me a while ago about showing off my older miniatures, and I just wanted to uh, tickle that uh, fancy. Now, I have my older zotes here. I found the upper torsos for him, painted in enamel. Mmm, very fancy, very older model. I think that's with like a weather gun or something. Part of me wants to remove the enamel and paint him up and do him justice, but at the same token, it's old. I like the fact that it's old, and I just can't seem to get around to taking off the paint. And I have another torso here, and this one is a much bigger gun. I think this is like a, um, a shuriken something or other, cannon or something. Anyway, so that's very old. Then we have mediocre old, which be old, um, get in focus. That would be Vlad von Casting. Had him for a long time. Had him for a very long time. And I've got to rebase him because uh, vampire counts, you know, cause reasons. And of course... Uh, an old dog. I can't remember what this dog is from. I think it was like a spectral hound or something. I can't remember. Good old sand on the bottom there. <laughs> Showing my age. Then the next one up would be um, Age of Reckoning with Gazbag and Gumlock. Um, they were from the uh, online game. If we ever do orcs, if I get around to an orc, so I'll unpackage them and away we go. Uh, put them together and have some fun. Uh, and what I found recently, which has very, very made me very happy, is the old man himself, Nagash. Now, his uh, top has come off his staff, and unfortunately, I cannot find the weapon arm. So I may have to look on eBay and try to pick up a, a weapon arm. But that said, I am so happy I found him. It makes me feel good. Now, the chances of Nagash being in the Tomb King's army is pretty small, but hey, you never know. Um, now, uh, I have been doing a lot of 3D printing, and I mean a lot. I printed up for my friend, once again, that ogre over there, and I've also given him, like, a, um, bounty hunter sort of guy with a peg leg, and he's got, like, a little pipe in his mouth and man hooks and so forth, and big tentacle wrapped around on his top of him, and, uh, he has a harpoon here, which is sort of pop into his arms and such and these are all printed at uh, point two uh, using the uh, resin supports as here and this one just came straight out didn't even break off the resin supports and I did another one for him which is a very conquistador style uh, one big gut lots of armor and I love how the uh, sword is flopped over the cloak and such and he'll have a lot of fun with both of those so that gives him what I've done two for him, three, four, that's five ogres I've given him. Uh, so I, I'm sure he'll be very happy. Now I printed up, once again, using the same technique, uh, a whole lot of um, Anubis warriors. Now I kind of buggered it up because these were supposed to be about yay big. And I was going to do them as like a shanty. And if they worked out really well, I was going to have them as like, you know, my bone joints, huge things. But I've got to resize them. So, you know, I've got a couple different you know, ones with swords and such. And some of them have a bit more of a crocodile, I think, feel, and then the other ones. But, you know, they're all really good. And a couple, I've even got ones with a bow and arrow. So I really can't argue. They've turned out absolutely beautiful. Absolutely lovely. And then just now off the printer, uh, I've done some swarms. So these are like insect swarms i've done one with like up there and what i'll do is i'll insert a couple of little 
skulls and some skeleton arms sort of clutching out of the, the ground. And I've got one which is uh, like on a high rock and so forth. So once again, I can put like, you know, I can't, you know, help but wonder if, you know, a little, a little skull type in there or maybe you can fill oh, no, There's a couple of little gaps so I can fit things in there. And then I put them on a 40 by 40 or 50 by 50 base, whichever base they tell us it's going to be on because, you know, it'd be nice if they could tell us, you know, what bases they're going to be on. But yeah, so the little scarab swarms, and they'll do perfectly fine, or insect swarms or whatever you want to call them. Now, um, I do want to talk to you about something. Now, as I said beforehand in previous videos, people that I know that I suspect work for Games Workshop have gone silent really silent uh, but I am talking with some other people and people that I th would like to say are very well versed within the the community and we were talking about the fact that we're going to have about three to five different factions for each race so you know if you're playing Tomb Kings you're going to have Cetra you're likely going to have Arkan or Nagash uh, Nafita, you more than just have one standard Lich King dude, and maybe, I think it's Apothos or whatever his name was, the guy that's all made of scarabs and such, and have different armies. As was pointed out, though, that if they're going to do that, then the book is going to be like, the army book is going to be thick, because you're going to have to have every army list with all their special rules, and, you know, what they can take and what they can't take. See, before, for those that haven't played... The normal rule book has says, right, this is everything in the army, and you can take all of it however you want, but within these points, restrictions, and so forth. And if they're going to do that sort of thing, then, you know, for five things, I mean, the, the rule book is like, what, yay thick? So, you know, times that by five, you're looking at a huge book. So we were umming and erring, and I came up with the suggestions, what if it's the same book? but with a couple of restrictions and a couple of benefits. So let's say uh, no matter what faction you take, you can take all the stuff. Maybe maybe one thing you can't take, but for the most part, you can take all of it. But uh, Cetra, let's say, gets um, all mummies at you know a quarter of the price. Nagash gets all skeletons, two points less or something per skeleton. So instead of costing four, they cost two. Uh, Nefrita gets, uh, or Nefertiti, whatever you want to call her, she gets all the snakes, um, or, or like uh, two units of snakes free of charge. Or, you know, the Lich Priest gets um, an additional spell, and then you'd have the last one, which was Apophis or whatever it is. Maybe all swarms are, you know, at 10 points less or something, or they count as rank and file. That way... The book doesn't have to be insanely thick, you know, maybe two, maybe three pages per faction, and away you go. And I don't think it's going to be restrictive too much, otherwise it just gets annoying. I mean, it, like, so let's say uh, Nagash gets um, the Screaming Skull Catapults and the Bone Giants. Uh, and that no one else can take them. That gets very annoying because, you know, if you've got, like, four bone giants there, it's going to get annoying. But I think that's the way it's going to go down. And the main reason for that is, if you think about it, it's a great way to sell your product. If you have um, Nagash, and Nagash is, like, right, all my skeletons because I've summoned up huge armies of undead, and instead of costing four points, cost two. All of a sudden, you're going to need an insane amount of skeletons for your army. Vroom, ching, 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 ching. If you're playing um, etc., and they bring up mummy units. So all of a sudden, you can have rank and file mummy units, you know, and you can have like five of these, and they count as troops. You don't have enough mummies, ching, 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 and so forth. I'm saying with Nefrita, uh, you know... Uh, I can't say they can do much with the Lich King, the Lich Priest, maybe. Uh, maybe the fact that he gets, um, you know, all of his spell casters an extra spell and so forth. He might get something else. Look, I'm just guessing here, but that seems to be the general consensus from what everyone thinks of is a great idea. So I get the feeling, and I hope it's right, that you'll be able to get everything, but certain groups will get stuff either cheaper 
or better or units that no one else can get that are brand spanking new. It's one of the only ways I can honestly think that they are going to make money off this game. I mean, if they're going to bring out all the same sanded troops that everyone's going to have lots of anyway, how are they going to sell more models? It, it, it makes no sense. So that's what I think we're going to see. And I do think that most models in the army are going to be a little bit cheaper to begin with anyway. So, you know, I think undead are going to be like four points at the moment. I think they're going to start at three. And then maybe within the gas army, you get an additional point off. You know, it's the only way they can honestly sell lots of miniatures because if they're going to bring out the same stuff, if you already got an army, why would you bother? If they bought that brand spanking new stuff, then absolutely. Bone Dragon, yes, I would love, I would love. And if anyone out there would like to buy me a Bone Dragon in February, please do because I would love it because I think it's going to be obscene in Australian dollars. Anyway. I'm going to start saving my pennies up just after Christmas. Hopefully, I'll save a little bit beforehand. But I want to get, hopefully, $1,000 saved. And I'm, that does sound really stupid. But Games Workshop Australia is not known for being kind to us. So the way I see it is a box set. All box sets hover around about $500. For 90 I think, was the most expensive, which was... Uh, Grand Master Edition for um, Adeptus Titanicus. And everything else is 460, 480 Australian. So I'm thinking about 460 Australian. Uh, maybe it might even pip just over 500. Who knows? And then the Dragon will more than cost about 320-ish Australian. Uh, and a box set of Undead will be about 100 bucks, 90 bucks, and so forth. So, yeah not good anyway i'm babbling uh if you have any questions just ask now this camera that i've got has more buttons than the space shuttle on all right so it's going to take me a while to manipulate it get it going someone mentioned sound i'll look into it uh and i'll go from there if you have any questions just ask oh before i forget these files uh and the little um dogman files can be found on uh my mini factory uh, and the Ogres, I think, can be found on my mini factory as well, but I had them from a Kickstarter from way, way ages ago, so I don't know. Um, any questions, just ask, and I would be happy to help you if I can. It's about midnight here in Perth, Western Australia. I'm going to pop this video online very shortly and then go to bed anyway because I have a very busy day tomorrow. Remember, love the game, love life, chaos out.